Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. Now, while the overall shape of the market is quite weak today, there are some stocks which are definitely standing out. And this is our segment, Midcap Spotlight. Hormaz, you're looking at Linde India, which is really holding up in this otherwise weak market. It's an outlier, isn't it? And when we last spoke about it, it's slightly off the highest point of the day, though. But it's an interesting note that has come out on uh, Linde mm. India. It's a prospect that is completely different from what it actually does. Okay. But uh, look at the stock first up. You look at the last 12 month returns. The stock is up over 50%, and it's been been a stellar outperformer since the lows of the COVID era. The COVID era low was around 400. It mm. made a high of 6,000. So it's a 15 bagger wow. to India. And look at the valuations there. Current year FY25 valuations are at 78 times. And despite the run-up that it has seen, it is still at an FY25 basis, it is still trading below its five-year average. So, uh, Linde India, there are 100x, 100 100x multiple <laughs> for Linde India and the run-up that it has seen. So, it's it's on the expensive side, no doubt about it. But uh, now, in, on, when it comes to shareholding patterns in Linde India, promoters hold 75%, it's been a constant thereof. Mutual funds, uh, domestic mutual funds have around 6.7% and they've been slowly pairing their stake over the last three quarters, booking some profits there as well. The FPI stake is around 2%, no significant names there, but some prominent domestic names, the Nippon Life India is one of them and Kotak is the other name that has more than 1% shareholding. Now, Haitong uh, came out with a note on Linde India on the 1st of March mm. and they are pegging this as a semiconductor opportunity okay. with the government recently approving these three semiconductor plants, one of which the Tata Group is going to set up in Gujarat. Mm. And Linde India already has a well-established relationship with the Tata Group. Now, Linde, uh, Haitong has an outperform rating as a 6,000 rupee price target. It is valuing it on an FY26 multiple of 62 times. So it's still lower than the FY25 multiple, but it's still at 62 times and an EPS of 105 rupees. Now, what Haitong is saying is that they are well positioned for the semiconductor opportunity due to the leadership that they have in the Indian gas market because mm. the gases that they supply, they are very critical components of the semiconductor fab. Mm. So that is a good opportunity for Linda India. And they are also saying that they ha already have a well-established relationship with the Tata Group, which also positions them well to capture share in uh, this market. Now, but what they are also saying is that any favorable outcome from this will only happen after FY26, which is why they are valuing the stock at an FY26 multiple okay. and they have kept their estimates unchanged. Now, they are expecting a revenue CAGR of 30%, a profit after tax CAGR of 34% over this period. And uh, some key risks that they are highlighting is a slowdown in the CAPEX cycle, increased competition, execution delays. So there are some mm. risks as well. But Linde India holding out in a weak market and a semiconductor opportunity coming up. Very, very interesting. The stock is currently at around 5600 and they see the target price over 6500 uh, truly, I mean, it's been a remarkable move for this one. But the other